Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. This is the last show of our 20th anniversary season, and we're very honored to have as our guest for the entire show, Judge James P. Gray, the Libertarian candidate for Vice President of the United States. Judge Gray, welcome back to Straight Talk. Art, it's just always nice to be with good people, and thank you, and it's an exciting time. But uh, let me change things around a little bit, because you are a recent groom. You've just recently gotten married. Mr. Levine, tell us about your new bride. Well, Diane, my new bride, is the best. I love her dearly, and thank you for asking. Your Honor, uh, you are running for Vice President of the United States on the Libertarian Party. Uh, we've known each other for many years. You are a longtime advocate of uh, decriminalization of drugs. We'll talk about that later in the show. But the presidential candidate uh, for the Libertarian Party, uh, Governor uh, Gary Johnson. Tell us about him. You know, I was quoted accurately and publicly for months saying that Governor Gary Johnson is the most qualified person to be President of the United States that I know of. Not just because of what he says, although he says certainly some good, good things, but for what he did while he was a two-term governor of New Mexico. You know, he was able to leave the state with a billion dollar surplus after his eight years from 1995 to 2003. He actually repealed or vetoed excessive spending measures more, 750 in eight years, more than all other 49 governors combined. And Art, his hap, the, the one that really tickles me the most is, he received a 260 page spending bill. He vetoed it and his message was, you take this back, make it more concise, only one sub subject at a time and I'll look at it and it never came back. And he was a re ran as a Republican and elected as a Republican in a state that's a Democratic majority. It's a Democratic state, and he was reelected by a larger amount than, than when he was originally elected. The man has never lost a race. He asked me to be his running mate, and I said, you know, I'll do it happily and gratifyingly on one condition, and that is we run to win. He's completely with that. None of this moral victory stuff, none of this make a good showing. We're going to run to win. And our strategy is, and it's very straightforward, if we poll by the end of September at 15 percent, we will be a part of the three presidential debates, and by the way, the one vice presidential debate. And if we get in those debates, we will show that we are head and shoulders above either Mr. Romney or Mr. Obama to the degree that they're both here together, almost joined at the hip with regard to so many issues. We are standing up for individual liberty and for, and for and economy. And you feel the American people are hungry for a third choice. Craving a third choice. There are so many people, the, the support for Mr. Romney is soft that about 20 percent, 30 percent of his supporters are only voting against Obama and vice versa. Obama's support is soft. They're just voting against Romney. They will never vote for each other. They will vote for Governor Johnson when they see what he will do for all of us. And so your goal now is to get up to 15 percent in polling so you'll be invited into Indeed. the presidential and vice presidential debates. And, yes. and that's key to getting critical, your message out. Critical. And you know, as far as our viewers are concerned, you know, keep your vote to yourself, but if a poller calls you on the phone, first of all, don't hang up. And secondly, say, I will support Governor Johnson for president. That will make the debates more interesting. We're the only third party as libertarians that will be on the ballot in every state in the union, uh, as opposed to others. And it will certainly make them more substantive, because we will make Mr. Obama and Mr. Romney discuss issues they do not want to well, discuss. Well, just one man's opinion here. I think you deserve a place at the table. Thank you deserve you. the right to be heard. And I'm sure both parties that tend to control the debate commission would just as leave see you not at the table. That's and right. And the threshold is that you have to get to 15 percent in polling. That's right. Nationwide. And someone told me that uh, they're trying to keep you out of the polls so that, that your name isn't mentioned. So yes. That Yes, you know, come on, let's let's do this. But one thing the Republicans and the Democrats unitedly agree upon is don't let the third party be a part. <laughs> they do that. Well, one thing that very much impressed me about the governor is that he has climbed the four highest peaks on seven continents. That's quite amazing. Yes, and he plans uh, uh, eventually after our uh, tour in Washington is over to climb the other three. He's an amazing man. 
He's a self-made man, an entrepreneur, uh, started his business literally in the garage, and now he actually had employed a thousand people, the only people uh, in running in this race that, that have done that sort of thing. I, by the way, will be more qualified than any of the vice presidential nominees. I will be the only one that has ever been a Peace Corps volunteer elected to national office, probably the only one that served in the military, certainly the only one with judicial experience, uh, 25 years as a judge. You can pretty much, as you know, Art, see anything that goes wrong in society in that amount of time. Let me just uh, mention that our guest is a former federal prosecutor and served for over 20 years on the bench on the municipal court appointed by Governor Duke Majin and then on Orange County Superior Court. I was proud to have been appointed by Duke Majin actually those two times. Uh, I was able to settle the first Catholic priest child sexual molestation case in the country. Difficult thing to do, but you got the parties together and accomplished things in that settlement, namely institutional changes in the Catholic Church they never could have gotten by going to trial. I work well with people. I listen. I'm trained to filter through evidence, figure out what's credible, what works under the law, figure out what laws work, etc., and then dust people off, make a decision actually and explain it. That's what I do. And I will be a really good candidate uh, for this office. I'm proud to be running with Governor Gary Johnson. Very impressive. In the next segment, we'll discuss some of the specific issues uh, on the uh, Johnson Gray uh, campaign trail. We are back continuing our conversation with Judge Gray, Libertarian candidate for Vice President of the United States. Uh, your presidential candidate, Gary Johnson, has a, an amazing brochure. And the headline is When Gary Johnson Goes to Washington, Everybody Goes, the People's President. And uh, if you want a different America, we have to start electing differently. The challenges facing our nation didn't just happen, we elected them. Are you satisfied with keeping the America their money keeps buying them? Then join me, talking to the special interests. And as your president, you'll always know where I stand. I stand with you. He is a man of the people. You know, amazingly, when he asked me to be his running mate, Art, he said, Jim, throughout the campaign, if your ideas are different than mine, feel free to discuss them. How many presidential candidates have you ever heard of yeah. who would be that self-confident He's there to the do the vice right president thing for the is right reason. the cheerleader for the president. That's and, right, to kind of rubber stamp the president. And also be the idea. attack dog if uh, necessary. Well, I can do that too on occasion. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, let's talk about uh, a couple of key issues. Uh, jobs in the economy is, is much in the news as a major issue. That's true. Your view of uh, what we do about that. Well, look, people don't realize this, Art. You do, but. For every dollar today that the federal government is spending, they're borrowing 43 cents. Yes. It simply is untenable. We really are becoming Greece. And uh, unsustainable. It is, and it's, it's simple. No company could do it. No household can do it. We will submit a balanced budget to Congress and will hold their feet to the fire very publicly, going over their heads to the public to get a balanced budget passed. We don't even have a budget in the last three years. So if, if you are, you know, I, I would tell our, our visuals, our people that are watching this, if you're comfortable with the way our country has been led for the last 12 years, vote for the Republican or the Democrat. If not, vote for Governor Gary Johnson and have him lead us like he did New Mexico for eight and years. And you both believe in the repeal of the income tax and the we substitute do. of a consumption tax. We absolutely do. You know, Why will we, that help? Well, Art, we can't get jobs by nibbling at the edges. We need a real institutional change. Repealing the income tax, and I know we don't have much time, it'll make our goods, both domestically and foreign uh, and exports, much more competitive because today we've paid taxes on them before they leave our shores. By the way, when we have imports come in, they haven't paid taxes on those goods. Ours have, so it's unfair uh, from a competition standpoint. I was explaining this to a man who is a uh, executive with Nike, you know, the shoemaker, and he was saying, Judge Gray, if we were to repeal the income tax, most companies would bring their manufacturing back to the United States of America. It is an amazing change. Despite we the higher cost of labor. Up, indeed, because we're, we're quality control is better, shipping costs, etc. We will bring jobs from that. Okay. So these are things that we can and we will do. On education, our schools are failing us in many instances. Transparently. Your platform involves choice. 
ask yourself a question. Who is in a better position to decide where and how your children should be educated? You as the parents or the government? That's an easy question to answer. Allow the parents to decide where their education money will be spent, which school their child will go to. They will demand excellence. They will receive excellence, innovation. You put us in office, we guarantee excellence in our schools nationwide within four years. Civil liberties, civil liberties is an area of great concern to many of us. Indeed. I speak to the, uh, the loss of freedom in our country over the last eight years. Where is Paul Revere? Why is no one spreading the alarm? You know, the Republicans and Democrats are unified on this. They support the Patriot Act. They support the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, where any of us could be labeled as terrorists, whether we could be detained, namely arrested, held without trial, actually deported to another country as citizens. We stand for the process of law. We libertarians do. They don't. They're using scare tactics and all the rest, but I tell you, the soul of the United States of America is our freedoms and our liberties, and our soul is under direct frontal attack by our own government today. Let's not let this happen. That isn't even talking about the war on drugs and that sort of thing, which we'll is another We'll way. come to that war in the next segment, well. but foreign policy. Uh, Sure. Uh, you have a, a different take on what we should be doing on foreign policy Truly. than the other two parties. You know something? I was in the military. I know how important it is to support our troops. And if we're going to go, if somebody attacks us, you know, they're going to really regret it. We will take the gloves off and we will defend ourselves. But people like, for example, the Obama administration, Mr. Romney, are talking about attacking Iran, for heaven's sake, bombing Iran. We won't do that unless they attack us or our allies. That we have foreign bases all around the world, more than 130 countries, 900 to 1,000 military bases in other countries. If they're necessary for our support, terrific, reinforce them. But if they're not, and most of them are not, bring them home. Let's spend the money here. Let's bring our families home. Check, have our, help our military strong, but, and if we're going to use it, we'll use it completely. We're not going to be in Afghanistan. We're not going to have troops in Somalia, for heaven's sake, the Sudan. That isn't in our national interest. They're not attacking us. And very quickly, us. I know you personally and publicly opposed the war against Iraq. Biggest mistake of my lifetime. You know, the Taliban wasn't in Iraq before. Saddam Hussein, of course, was a bad guy, but the Iraqis have suffered so much. The under biggest us mistake was was invading Iraq, our troops in not Iraq. opposing. Absolutely. The, yeah. Continuing our conversation with Judge James Gray. Uh, if you are motivated uh, to want to support uh, the candidacy of uh, Governor Johnson and Judge Gray, uh, the website will be put up at the end of the segment, www.garyjohnson2012.com, telephone number 1-800-ELECT-US. In this segment, we want to get a little more close and personal with our very distinguished guest. He not only is an attorney and a judge, he's also an author. He's written uh, several books, including Wearing of the Robe, uh, How to Be a Judge, and also a Voter's Handbook, which we all need to get more involved as citizens. And that's not enough. He is also a composer, and he has written a high school musical, uh, Americans All, a high school musical review. A man for all seasons. It, life is good. I have a really good time. Now, Judge, uh, you are a graduate of UCLA and then SC Law School. You were in the Navy and JAG. You served in the Peace Corps. Quite a varied life. I've been blessed. I, I say, actually, in my Wearing the Robe book, the first sentence in the introduction was, the best decision I ever made in my life was choosing my parents. And uh, <laughs> that gave me a real benefit throughout my life. And your dad was a judge. My father was a federal judge, one of the heroes of my life. Uh, William P. Gray actually is the, the name of our Inn of Court, which is our ethical uh, organization down in, in Orange County. Well, you know, I teach ethics as I well as law here on campus. That's and what it's I a wrote on my, of mine. what I wrote on my copy of my book for you. Thank you. Thank you. And would you agree that our country is at risk because of values, lack of values, or the wrong values? Absolutely. We need to bring responsibility back to our, to our people, and that's an institutional issue that the government really works against. Uh, we, we need to do that. We need government, of course, but government should be the last resort instead of the first resort. Individual responsibility, education, 
ethics, that sort of thing. We've gotten away from it. My musical talks about that a lot. I'm proud of it. And the Libertarian Party has long stood for maximizing personal freedom, minimizing government involvement. It's and, true. Uh, I guess the forefathers would be a little bit shocked at how gigantic the federal government has grown. Unbelievable. You know, there is still an amendment to the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment, that says that those d powers not delegated to the federal government are reserved for the states. I really believe that the state of California, for example, should be able to decide how best to, to help and support its people. As to, for example, the marijuana issue, it's not a public, it's not a federal issue, it should be a state issue, and I think we're adult enough to do that. And I think a lot of people instinctively feel, and I certainly do, that the decisions get better as you get closer to the people, and they get worse as you get further and further removed. A couple of ways of addressing this. First of all, how many people watching feel that the federal government has all the answers? Well, of course not. And in addition, our country was founded on the concept of federalism, which means each state should be able to best decide these issues. Laboratories for experiments. Of exactly right. And then if Illinois comes up with something that doesn't work very well, Indiana does, we'll, we'll learn from each other. So the U federal government is, is much too strong, although I'm not in favor of Nebraska having a treaty organization with uh, Italy, for example. No, you know, that, some areas uh, that the federal that would government not work. should work. Uh, but uh, needless to say, I assume you guys are opposed to Obamacare. Oh, absolutely. A galloping in the wrong direction. And actually, the Supreme Court did Mr. Obama a major disservice because now people are going to see how badly thought out this is, how ridiculously expensive, tax on the elderly and the young. Uh, it's just, it's not going to work. It's going to hurt him as well it should. And of course, Mr. Romney is in the same boat. Governor Johnson would repeal Obamacare and put in individual responsibility and competition back into the medical profession. Uh, and set up a safety some net for people. Some people have observed that the post office is not exactly a model of efficiency. I've noticed that too, actually. Amazing. Uh, FedEx could do it. Uh, UPS uh, really quite much better. The public sector doesn't work as well as the private sector in many, many areas. So you believe in the market-driven mechanism to organize allocation of resources? With regulation. We, we have to have regulation. But the problem, like I know we don't have much time, but this whole housing issue was exacerbated and caused by the federal government because they insured the private risk taking. Well, you know, you would take risks too if you didn't have to be responsible Gambling for it. Gambling on someone else's That's money. That's what happened. And yeah. now they're standing in the way of change. The banks can't loan money to, to businesses, even with a good business plan. They put in so many regulations and, and that they just can't do it. So the, the federal government is standing in the way of our prosperity. Judge, we have a minute left. I want to give it to you to say whatever you want to our viewers about your candidacy and that of the Libertarian Party well, and thank the you. governor. Thank you. Art, first of all, congratulations on your 20 years and your, your recent marriage. Thank you. Uh, I am excited to be involved with this race. We can win this. People will vote for Governor Gary Johnson if we're in the debates. They will see that he has done this. He stands for individuals, for prosperity, for equal opportunity, and for liberty. And I couldn't be more proud and excited. Nothing this exciting has happened to me since the birth of my children. So it's nice to be able to be with you. Uh, this is something we will win this if we're in the debates, I promise you. Judge, thank you for again joining us on Straight Talk, and thank you also for your service to our country. Life is good. Congratulations again. I think it's very fortunate for our country to have men of the quality of Judge Gray and Governor Johnson willing to uh, get involved in the political process. And it was an honor to have the judge on our show.